Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering and the Coordinator Teaching Learning Center, Care College of Engineering, Trichy. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about chunking a lecture. So before we uh, discuss the concept, chunking the lecture, we will just look at the scenario in the classroom. Uh, what is happening for 50 minutes period in a classroom? So in the classroom today in classes, majority of the teachers taking the class continuously for 45 minutes and the 5 minutes may be for taking utterance or clarifying the doubt if there is any doubt from the students or from the teacher. The 40 minutes lecture may be the delivery of the subject content using the chalk and talk method or PPT presentation or solving the problem. Sometimes both there will be chalk and talk and solving the problem. But few teachers, few teachers taking the class only part of the time not fully uh, for the 45 minutes or 50 minutes, maybe 20, 30 minutes they will be taking the class and discussing with the students for the remaining time. So the discussion may be an informal discussion. So what happens when they are discussing with the informal way? A few students are discussing with the teachers, few students are talking with their fellow students and so on. So there will be an informal discussion inside the classroom. Then we ask this question, what would be the effective teaching strategy in the today's classroom? So the student's mentality has drastically changed over the 10 years, particularly after the COVID-19, the student behavior inside the classroom, the learning methodology of the students have changed. So many of the research shows that both the method mentioned earlier, so what we discussed in the previous slide are not effective teaching for the present day digital age or information age learners. The today the learners are born after 2020, they are known as digital age learners or information age learners. The learner psychology says that any learner can effectively listen to a lecture for a maximum of 15 minutes. So whatever the age, irrespective of the age, the listening time may be 10 to 15 minutes for any learner. Then it is challenging to retain the interest of the learner for the 15 minutes. So we have a 15 minutes period. So the, it is challenging for the teacher to retain the interest of the learner for 15 minutes. So the challenge can be resolved by chunking the lecture. So what does it mean, chunking the lecture? Chunking a lecture means to create multiple small segments or chunks of content. So it may be a video or text from the initial lecture material. So we prepare the material, lecture material for a particular period or a particular unit. Then we split into chunks, small segments. So academically speaking, chunking is essentially breaking down the content you want your student to learn into manageable bits, a small part of the lecture. The reason for chunking is our working memory have a limited cognitive load. So I said earlier, the listening time is 15 minutes maximum and uh, there is a limitation for the cognitive load. So what is the amount of information we are giving to the mind to digest, giving to the mind to understand. So there is a limitation. This, lim this means that we can only mentally digest a certain amount of content before the mental fatigue or overload sets in. So there will be mental fatigue after 
maybe after 10 to 15 minutes, there will be mental fatigue for the students. So whatever the teachers telling or teaching, that does not reach the student. So you look at the five slots for a lecture period. So I go split the lecture period, 15 minutes period into five slots. The five minutes for the review from the previous lecture and the informing the students the today's topic. Then you have to present the content for 15 minutes only. This is what the chunk. So the total lecture. So in this model, it is split into two chunks. First chunk part one, second chunk part two. In between, we have a reflection spot for 10 minutes. Then at the end, we have again yeah, highlighting the lecture, highlighting the content what we discuss in the two chunks, two part. And we have to make a conclusion about the lecture. What is the takeaway from the lecture? That is what the conclusion. So what is significance of the reflection spot? So we have a reflection spot in between. If the content delivery is monologue form, the learners getting disengaged after a few minutes, however the good, however good the content may be, whatever the whoever the teacher, whatever the content, whether this is interesting, whatever the me methodology of presentation. So after a few minutes, learners will be disengaged from the lecture. So hence it is necessary to provide points where the learners can connect with the content and to interact with the teacher. So this is called as reflection spot. So we provide opportunity for the learner to discuss about the content what we presented in the first part with the teacher. So the discussion may be initiated by the teacher. Normally we have to systematically plan the reflection spot so that it will be effective uh, for the teaching learning process. The reflection spot is logical point where the, we provide opportunity to the learners for micro practice and uh, to assimilate what they have just learned and uh, to express their opinion or interact with the teachers about the content. That is the purpose of the reflection spot. Then the question normally what to do with the reflection spot. So we conduct a well designed quiz in the preceding content. So in the first 15 minutes. We prepare some quiz questions and you discuss the quiz questions with the students, make them to answer either individually or in a group so that you can understand to what extent the content is reached the student or what extent the student understood the content from the teacher. Or you can do, you can make, you can ask the student to write a report on the preceding content. You continuously deliver for 15 minutes. And they give a break for 5 minutes or 10 minutes or 2 minutes, ask them to write a report on that and ask them to write down the information. So check few responses from the students. Involve all the students in rotation. Do not ask the answers to the same set of students. So you have to involve everybody in the classroom for the discussion. Conclude with the correct answer and continue with the next section. So this is what we have to do in the reflection spot. So the five segments I have prepared as a session plan. So the session plan, the effective session plan is given here. The five segments are shown here for 15 minutes. So first column is content. Second column is the learning aid and methodology. What the methodology adopted by the teacher? What is the faculty approach? What the faculty will do? And then what the student activity, what the student will do? And what kind of skill and competency developed in the, with the students? So this is based on the OBE, outcome based education. So when you want to implement outcome based education inside the classroom and when you want to see everybody effectively learning inside the classroom. So this is the sample plan for the 15 minutes period. So first to five minutes, you review the previous period content and the top you inform the students about the topic what we are going to discuss. So again, reviewing the previous period content. You, the teacher normally they will try to tell whatever they discuss earlier. Instead, we can go for a brainstorming session with the students. We can open up for discussion, ask the student to answer to the question. What is discussed in the previous lecture? Or we can prepare a well-designed quiz, quiz questions 
and you can ask the student to answer the question. So here, the teacher will act as a facilitator. The students will be listening to the uh, quiz program or brainstorming session and participate. So what kind of skill developed? It is remembering, understanding, and the oral communication of the student is improving. And you present the second session, first session, first part of your lecture for 15 minutes or 20 minutes using either chalk and talk method or PPT presentation. So what do you do as a teacher? We explain, we discuss, we derive, or we solve problem. So what the student will do? They will listen, clarify their doubt, and take notes of the uh, session. And again, what kind of skill developed here, a competence developed here? They remember, they understand, and the written communication skill, it is improving. So then you conduct the activity, maybe for five minutes or 10 minutes, you conduct the activity. So the activity, it is what the reflection spot, what we said earlier. So the reflection spot are the activity we do. So either you can use the think pair share or a visible quiz. So maybe two to three questions from the uh, lecture notes of the first session or the first part. Again, the teacher will act as a facilitator and the student will be listening and participating uh, in the uh, quiz program or the activity. So again, the remembering, understanding, and the oral communication will improve. Again, you present the second session. So the same kind of activity. Uh, remember, actually, the skill will be developed. And finally, you conclude. Once again, you can use the brainstorming. You ask the students to conclude about the lecture. And you are, you can use the one minute paper. So one minute paper is the effective methodology to get the feedback from the students about the lecture so that you can consolidate the points written by the students. And then you can discuss the uh, missed out point or the confusing point in the next class. So again, the communication will be improving. The student communication will be improving. The, the, the remembering skill and understanding skill also improving. So this is the effective session plan for implementing outcome-based education inside the classroom. So when we, when we see that the outcome-based education is implemented inside the classroom and the lecture is planned as per the OBE, then there will be effective learning inside the classroom. So the other, when the learning happens inside the classroom, the other skills, other uh, uh, competencies, everything will be developed in the student's mind and there will be a better learner better people for the society so thank you for listening if you got any clarification you can write to my mail id or in my whatsapp number so i can clarify all your doubt thank you we we'll meet again in another lecture